For 200 years, successive explorers sailed up the Californian coast and failed to notice the entrance to a huge system of interconnected river estuaries. Then, in 1769, Gaspar de Portola looked for a land route to Monterey Bay, but didn't recognize it in the fog and marched right past, ending up at what would eventually become the San Francisco Bay. Disappointed, he and his party turned back and once more marched right past Monterey Bay, ending up back in San Diego, minus a few mules they'd had to eat to avoid starving to death. <laughs> San Francisco itself was founded seven years later with the establishment of a presidio, a military fort, and the mission of St. Francis of Assisi, also known as Mission Dolores, in what is now the Mission District. The building still stands next to the rather more spectacular basilica of 1918, but oddly, the town that grew up here was originally called Yerba Buena. And it wasn't called San Francisco until America claimed California during the Mexican American War, which lasted from 1846 until 1848. And then, of course, came the gold rush, which is when things really got going, the Golden Gate acquired its name, and the city's population rose from 1,000 to 25,000 in a single year. San Francisco, as we know it, is only really about 150 years old. But manages to pack a lot of history into that period. Three things make the city an improbable success story. First, it's impossibly hilly, and city planners' insistence on a grid layout means that many roads are dangerously steep, most famously Lombard Street between Leavenworth and Hyde, the crookedest street in the world and a tourist attraction in its own right. <laughs> San Francisco's famous cable cars were invented out of necessity. The steep climbs were simply too much for horses. Second, it is often chilly and foggy. As the valleys inland heat up, air rises, sucking in cold air from the Pacific through the Golden Gate, leaving unprepared tourists shivering in t-shirts and shorts. Third, it's uncomfortably close to the San Andreas Fault, and earthquakes are a major hazard. Most famously, in 1906. The city was almost completely destroyed. The earthquake itself was bad enough, but broken gas and water pipes meant that huge fires broke out, with firefighters resorting to dynamite to create firebreaks. It was nothing short of a holocaust, and an estimated 3,000 people lost their lives, and more than half the population were made homeless. One of the structures that survived, albeit rather damaged, was the ferry building, whose tower became a beacon of hope. If the ferry terminal was still operational, at least there was still an escape route. It stands at the end of Market Street, San Francisco's main street, and was at one time a major transport interchange, the second busiest in the world, 
with a huge plaza for cable cars, buses and trams. With road bridges and a light rail tunnel spanning the bay, ferries are no longer so important, but the piers along the Embarcadero remain popular with tourists. Pier 39 is a concentration of small tourist traps, but the 1989 earthquake brought an unexpected new attraction. Nobody knows exactly why, after the quake, sea lions started coming here to bask, but they seem perfectly happy to do so. They are safe from sharks here, but nobody quite knows why that should be either. Alcatraz, that famous prison, one-time home of Al Capone, is surprisingly close, but the currents and freezing temperatures made any escape attempt dangerous. Of the 36 who tried, only three may have escaped, although officially at least, they were lost at sea. Chrissy Field, now a park, came into being as an airfield in the early days of aviation, and saw many pioneering milestones, including the birth of airmail. Of course, the best known landmark of the city is the Golden Gate Bridge. Officially, it was designed by Joseph B. Strauss, but in fact, he didn't actually know the first thing about building suspension bridges, so credit should really go to Leon Moisif, Irving Morrow and Charles Ellis. The bridge is painted in a colour called International Orange, as opposed to the more usual silver or grey. Incredibly, this was opposed by the US Navy, who, worried about the danger of ships crashing into it, wanted it to be painted in yellow and black stripes. The bridge had to be built over Fort Point, originally constructed by the Spanish and taken over by the US military is strategically important. In the event, nothing ever happened for the fort to defend against, and it is now a historical curiosity. In 1915, the Panama Pacific International Exposition celebrated the rebirth of the city after the events of 1906, the opening of the Panama Canal and the 400th anniversary of the discovery of the Pacific Ocean. Exhibits included the actual Liberty Bell, the first steam locomotive purchased by the Southern Pacific Railroad and a telephone line enabling New Yorkers to hear the sound of the Pacific. The buildings were designed to be temporary and most were dismantled except the Palace of Fine Arts, which was left to decay on the grounds that every great city needs a ruin. It was, however, reconstructed in the 1960s and now houses the Exploratorium, a science museum. Pacific Heights is an upmarket area with a fine collection of turn-of-the-century architecture. The Spreckles Mansion was built in 1912 for Adolf Spreckles, who ran the Spreckles Sugar Company, and his wife Alma, the great-grandmother of San Francisco, a philanthropist who did much for the poor of the city and of war-torn Europe. They met, incidentally, when she was posing for the Dewey Monument in Union Square. He was, at the time, twice her age and so became the original Sugar Daddy. Nearby Knob Hill was originally settled by unscrupulous businessmen who'd made their fortunes during the settlement of the Wild West, hence the word knob to describe a wealthy snob. This is also the site of Grace Cathedral. The design was based on that of Notre Dame in Paris, but it's a modern building, completed in 1967. About half of San Francisco's population is white, Another third is Asian, hence Chinatown. Immigration from the Guangdong province began in the early 1850s, with many new arrivals working as labourers on the railroads. This was the one area of the city they were allowed to own property. More recently, 
New arrivals with little knowledge of English found it hard to find work anywhere else, and so San Francisco's Chinatown is one of America's most densely populated neighborhoods. It was also, for a time, at the mercy of criminal gangs. One of the few good things to come out of the 1906 fire was that law-abiding citizens and legitimate businesses finally managed to gain the upper hand. Although trouble does still occasionally resurface. Thanks to the gold rush, San Francisco became an important banking and finance center, the Wall Street of the West. It's home to about 30 international financial institutions, and of course, all this requires a huge support infrastructure, meaning jobs for lawyers, PR companies, architects, and so on. Additionally. It's close to Silicon Valley and home to several dot-com companies. The 21st century has been good to the city, which has emerged intact following the bursting of the dot-com bubble in 2001.